Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at Bloom's Taxonomy. Now, Bloom's Taxonomy is a framework for learning that can help improve the quality of how students learn and teachers teach. The framework helps you understand the different levels at which you master knowledge. Now, as a learner, you can use this information to better structure your studying and gauge your competence. As a teacher, you can use this information to better plan your lessons and measure your students' competence. Now, the taxonomy was created in the 1950s by Benjamin Samuel Bloom, an American educational psychologist. There are actually three versions of the taxonomy, one for each of the following domains. So firstly, the cognitive domain, which focuses on the acquisition of knowledge. Secondly, the effective domain, which focuses on feelings, emotions, and attitudes of the individual. And finally, the psychomotor domain, which focuses on manual or physical skills. Now, in this video, we'll concentrate on the most popular domain, the cognitive domain, concerning how people acquire knowledge. So with that, let's jump in and take a look at the taxonomy. So the first thing to notice about Bloom's taxonomy is that it has two versions. So the version on the left is the original 1950s version created by Bloom. And the version on the right is Bloom's revised taxonomy, created in 2001 by Lauren Anderson and others, Anderson being a former student of Bloom's. We will focus on the revised taxonomy, but everything we cover in this video could equally be applied to the original version. As you can see, Bloom's taxonomy consists of six levels. The lowest level of challenge for learners and teachers is at the bottom of the taxonomy, and the most challenging level is at the top. Lower order thinking exists towards the bottom of the pyramid and involves memorizing basic facts. Higher order thinking exists towards the top of the pyramid and requires you to apply knowledge, such as the ability to hypothesize and theorize. The further through the taxonomy your learning progresses, the more expert you will be in a particular subject. Now, it's important to realize that lower levels are not necessarily harder than higher levels and you don't always want to get to the higher levels. So for example, if you want to take part in a TV quiz show, you just need to know facts, not the ability to create new ideas or hypothesize. Let's look at each of the levels that comprise the taxonomy. So the first order of thinking is to remember. This is to do with recalling relevant facts and figures from long-term memory. The second order of thinking is to understand. This is to do with comprehension, not just recall. You should be able to draw conclusions from information and summarize information. The third order of thinking is to apply. Here, you interpret facts and rules you've just learned to solve problems in new situations. The fourth order of thinking is to analyze. This is concerned with breaking information into its constituent parts and interpreting how those parts relate to each other and to an overall structure. The fifth order of thinking is to evaluate. This is concerned with judging or critiquing information based on criteria and standards. And the final order of thinking is to curate. This concerns combining previously assimilated elements in new ways to create something new. Now, notice that there are verbs associated with each level of the taxonomy. These verbs become important when you want to use Bloom's taxonomy. So how do you use Bloom's taxonomy? Well, it's all to do with the action verbs. You choose a verb from the level in the taxonomy you want to target and use that verb to set your learning objectives. Now, learning objectives are the knowledge, skills and capabilities a student can expect to acquire from your class or training. And they usually follow this structure. At the end of this workshop, lesson or course, students will be able to, and then you simply describe what it is that students will be able to do. So, for example, if you were giving a math workshop about prime numbers, then you might define your learning objectives as follows. At the end of this workshop, students will be able to define a prime number. Now, define is a verb taken from the remember level. Students will be able to explain why 17 is a prime number. Explain is from the understand level. And finally, at the end of this workshop, students will be able to calculate the prime factors of any prime number under 1000. Calculate being a verb taken from the apply level. Now, defining learning objectives in this way before you give your lesson helps both you and your students. 
Firstly, having clear learning objectives helps make it easier for the teacher to create lessons and exercises that target that level. Secondly, it helps students understand precisely what they should know once they have completed the course. Let's take a look at an example of using the taxonomy. Now, for this example, imagine you are a manager at an online retailer and you want to teach your team how to add new content to your company's website. Traditionally, you have delivered this training simply by standing in front of a big PowerPoint deck and explaining everything. However, this hasn't proved effective, so this time you decide to use Bloom's taxonomy. Now, when using the taxonomy, the first thing you need to think about is where you want your team to be once they've completed your training. For this example, you decided at the end of your training, your team will be able to create new and interesting web pages and add them to your website. You have deliberately chosen the verb create to define your learning objective because you expect your team to be at the top of the taxonomy once the training is complete. Now, next, you need to think about where your team is right now. In your case, then your team is utterly clueless about websites and HTML. So you decide to start teaching from the bottom of the taxonomy. Now, using this start and end point, you use Bloom's taxonomy to structure your training into six lessons, each lesson focusing on a different learning objective, targeting each level of the taxonomy in turn as follows. So lesson one at level one, remember, so here you explain the essential HTML elements to your team. At the end of the lesson, your team will be able to recall the important elements of HTML. Lesson two happens at level two, understand. And at the end of this lesson, your team will be able to summarize the purpose of HTML in some of your website's actual pages. Level three, at level three, the apply level. Now, at the end of this lesson, each of your team members will be able to implement their own basic web page for the first time, solving problems as they arise. Lesson four happens at level four, analyze. Upon completing this lesson, each team member will research and explain what elements they should add to their web page to take it to the next level. Lesson five at level five is evaluate. And at the end of this lesson, each team member will be able to critique each other's web pages, highlighting their relative advantages and disadvantages. Lesson six at level six is create. And at the end of the final lesson, each team member will be able to create new web pages to meet certain objectives, which they will then add to your website. Here, they use what they have learned to create something entirely new. Now, through the six lesson course that you've designed using Bloom's taxonomy, you hope to give your team a much deeper understanding and greater confidence around web page creation than the previous approach of simply spending all day standing in front of a PowerPoint presentation. Now note that you don't have to start at the bottom of the taxonomy and work your way up. You can move around the levels as you think is most appropriate for your students and what you're teaching. So this diagram shows that you might learn some knowledge and then move on to applying it. And after that, you might learn some more knowledge. So move back down the taxonomy before moving on to analyzing and relating both pieces of knowledge together. Now, there are several advantages and disadvantages associated with Bloom's taxonomy. In terms of advantages, then it establishes learning goals to be achieved by both teacher and student. By classifying learning, it allows you to think more strategically about the type of learning students should be undertaking. And finally, it makes it easy to assess if your lessons and evaluations are consistent with your learning objectives. In terms of disadvantages, then the taxonomy provides a false representation of learning. Learning is not a linear process whereby each level is separate from all others. And finally, the model can blind you to the integrated cognitive processes taking place in a person's brain as they learn. So in summary, Bloom's taxonomy is a framework for learning that can help you understand the different levels at which you master knowledge. As a learner, it can help you improve how you structure your studying and how you gauge your competence. As a teacher, it can help you better plan your lessons and better measure your students' competence. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. 
and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.